Good evening and welcome to Templeville Road, uh, where this evening St Mary's take on Trinity College Dublin in a vital Division 1B of the Ulster Bank All Ireland League. Uh, is taking place. I'm Adrian O'Farrell, I'm joined by uh, Gordon Black. Uh, Gordon, it's a bit of a shame the conditions aren't fantastic. There's a, a light drizzle, it's not as bad as it was earlier on. Um, thankfully there's no wind but it's a bit of a shame for this uh, match that uh, these two running sides are going to have to, to handle uh, the wet conditions this evening. Good evening Adrian, good to meet up with you again. Um, yes, conditions haven't been good today but mind you they're far better here than they are in other parts of the country. I know that there's inspections planned in Cork and go in Galway tomorrow for vital matches in, in the various divisions. So we got away quite lightly in Dublin. Uh, when I arrived here about a quarter to six, the wind was blowing strongly and the rain was quite heavy and it seems to have all eased back now. So hopefully the conditions will not, will not be too bad. As you say, yes, there are two very good running sides. And um, Dublin University were led out by Nick McCarthy, who of course is the son of a, a legend of this, of this club. And there's a lot of affiliation between the two clubs as Dara Fanning made reference to in his recent speech there this evening. So hopefully we're going to have a good game. And, yes, um, indeed. Uh the Mary's captain this evening is, uh, is, is Darren Fanning, son of a, another Mary's legend in, in Declan, uh, whose speech you were just listening to, I think, downstairs. It went on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And of course, tonight's referee, interestingly, Frank Murphy, uh, former Munster and Connaught scrum half, and Leicester he played with. I had the pleasure of being with him in Hanover about uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when he refereed his first international Germany and Portugal in the... Uh, European Division 1, which is the league directly below the Six Nations. Very good. I, did, I hadn't realised Frank Murphy had turned to the, the referee, but uh, yeah. you as the ex-ref will always have a keen eye on that. <laughs> so Sean Carnes has, has dropped off deep and uh, to start this match well taken by Trinity. And Mary's look to hold that up and uh, affect the choke tackle, looking to get the attacking scrum here. And it looks like they're going to see seed in that. Certainly they have... There's been a, a late change today uh, to the Trinity team. Uh, James McDermott, their out half, the normal out half has been replaced. He's had a knee injury. He's been replaced by Tommy Whittle, uh, the ex yard school player. So uh, a big day for the, the Leinster under 20s uh, out half coming into this key fixture. Yeah, it's a sad loss for Trinity because Jack McDermott has had a great season. He was the out half on the Irish amateur, the club's 15, that played against France and England recently. Um, and he or against Scotland, he has had a very good season. In fact, both half-backs for Trinity played on that side. And the first scrum, as is predictable these days, has gone down. It wheeled around uh, quite quickly. Maybe Trinity a little bit lucky that they weren't penalised for moving that around. And I'd imagine Frank Murphy will try and move them uh, around in the scrum just to ensure that they get good footing uh, so the game is not blighted by the curse of collapsed scrums. So the position going into this game is that St Mary's are, are top of Division 1B at 68 points. Trinity are on 64. Uh, and the, the key importance of this game is that whoever finishes top of the league uh, after this and one more game will get automatic promotion to Division 1A. So if Mary's win tonight, they will get promoted. That's against the head, though. And uh, that's a, it's a, a notable uh, achievement in that first scrum by, from Trinity. Yeah, Patrick Finlay, the, the Trinity hooker, would be delighted with that. We couldn't see, possibly it was kicked through. But Patrick Finlay is the grandson of the former Lord Chief oh, Justice. Looks like a high tackle there indeed. Frank Murphy's arm goes up with the high tackle. So Trinity get an opportunity to uh, relieve themselves of the early pressure that Mary's have had them under. Yes, yeah, so, um, so if Mary's win, basically they will get promoted. Correct. If, um, they, if they lose, uh, it will go down to next week. Uh, to see who's going to get that automatic spot uh, yeah. with, with uh, Mary's playing away to Dolphin who are sly 7th and Trinity at home to Rock who lie 8th um, so not much to choose in that so this, this, could very well, this is going to go down to the wire Oh absolutely um, Trinity beat uh, Mary's I think it was 20 points to 14 in College Park in their 3rd or 4th game of the season uh, it had been pushed back a couple of weeks because Trinity went to Oxford to play in, in the World Universities Tournament in conjunction with the Rugby World Cup in England uh, where they played extremely well 
uh, got to the final, uh, unfortunately lost out in that there, and then came back and got on a run, having lost their first two games in the league. So Brian McGovern showing a little early footwork there uh, from the tight head uh, off that uh, line out. So we're promising signs for Trinity who won the first scrum against the head and first, the first line out against the throw. Uh, it's a bit simplistic, Gordon, is it, to, to suggest that uh, that's an unfortunate moment for young Whittle there as he dropped that, but it has gone backwards. But uh, as Trinity looked to run that out of their own 22, to pitch this as the, um, as the lighter students who look to move everything wide against the, uh, the heavier uh, Mary's uh, team throughout. Uh, and, and Mary's would have that, experience, that, uh, that advantage in experience with some, some noted former professionals. They were a good drive race. forward by the Trinity captain, uh, Nick McCarthy there. Um, it's a good box kick there by uh, Angus Lloyd. Return to Lloyd takes again, throws it infield to Whittle. And an opportunity, first opportunity really for, uh, for fullback Connor Kearns, who is a, an attacking, exciting runner uh, in open field. Lloyd again, Whittle this time going to the boot and just nudging that one through. It's just to go back to what you were saying, Adrian, about the, the lighter trinity. They still have a very fine pack, which of course is, is coached by one of the, the legends of this club, Hugh Maguire, mm -hmm. who both played and coached in, in Mary's and has now spent uh, many, many years now coaching in Trinity. I can see his, his bald head storming up and down there. Um, a great man to give advice to referees at the appropriate time. Um, but he, welcome, no doubt, Gordon. Absolutely. But he's been a wonderful servant to, uh, to Dublin University over the last few years himself and Tony Smith have been a fantastic a very coaching team. team there and they've they've done a great job in turning sort of th that early season team into a, a fairly very nuggety packs in particular by the end of the season yeah but this has been a Trinity side who've been together a little bit it's, it's not quite uh, the the youthful side you might might expect everything is cyclical in universities um, but the, the Trinity have a the few guys around now for a few years uh, Paddy Lavelle in the centre um, was, I think he was captain last year. They thought he was going, uh, but whatever happened career-wise, he decided he'd have another year in Trinity. Unfortunately for, for Trinity, they're missing his partner, uh, Seb from the German international in the centre, who picked up a hamstring injury in the victory over UCD. And he's been replaced by Michael Courtney, the son of Donald Courtney, the international referee, who just announced his retirement recently as the boss of European referees. Uh, is going into goes back to referees. Everything comes back to referees, of course. Speaking of which, the Frank Murphy has, has penalised Trinity there for not rolling away after the, the tackle, so uh, an early opportunity to put points on the board here for Sean Kearns, one would think. Yeah. Indeed, indicates for, towards the post. Yeah, Sean Kearns had a, a very good season with the boot. Um, he's, uh, I think I read in, in D. O'Brien's notes that he gave us for this game that he's almost word perfect with the boot throughout the season. Um, the last time I was here, uh, this season I saw them play Balamina in what was first versus second at that stage of the season and uh, Mary's looked in trouble early on against a huge Balamina pack uh, but gradually wore them down and deservedly won the game and uh, that's, that's been a feature for Mary's and, and again perhaps points to that experience that they have in their ranks but they've won quite a few games later on I know against uh, Buccaneers there was a key one where Sean Kearns is about to take this kick uh, Scored a try with the, with the last minute or two to, to win what is proving to be a very vital four points. And they, they also went to Balamina in the return game and scored with, with, with the final line of the game. They've been told it was the final play. They drove them off in 20 metres out uh, and, and scored what turned end up to be a controversial try, but it was given by the referee to win them the game. And um, they uh, have has not the looked distance. back since. Yes, and he's the made points. that fine strike from Kearns just on the 10 metres line. Sean Kearns leads the score. St Mary's 3, Dublin University 0. So first blood to St Mary's. Um, as you were saying, Adrian, earlier on, they need to win tonight to be guaranteed the trophy. And uh, I wasn't allowed to say much beforehand, but it is in the back of my car. In the event that they do win this game, uh, there will be a presentation afterwards, uh, just down below us. Uh, so, but Trinity, I'm quite sure, and I have plenty of friends in the Trinity uh, Club who will be doing their utmost to ensure that presentation does not take place tonight. 
Fine take there from Max McFarland. And they've got strength in the wings, Trinity and McFarland, and also on the other wing, Tim Mopin, who's a, a USA Eagle uh, and is the top try scorer in the division with 10 tries. So, That's solid defence, though, by Marys. Yep. Michael Courtney Good taking that one into contact. <laughs> Lloyd now. Uh, Lloyd is well taken there by. Uh, by open side David Aspel. Yeah, David Aspel, a new name on the Mary side. Um, people wouldn't really know him. Oh, they had to move that. They had a five to three going right there if they moved it on, but unfortunately, yeah. it was a prop forward and he's been turned over, has he? There's no, still you numbers got right here, though. If they can you've put, you've got to move it, you've got to move it. Whittle, Courtney, McFarland, but he's going to be taken into touch. Yeah. Yep. Both Ivan Dineen and uh, Darla Fanning in on the tackle there. It's good, a good matchup in this wing, Adrian. You've got Tim Mopin, the USA international, up against Darla Fanning, who just been announced recently is uh, retiring from uh, provincial rugby. And as his father said at the, in the speech down below, he's opened a new restaurant in Hatch Street called Zambrero, so everyone's got to go in and support that. <laughs> it was a very fine piece of marketing <laughs> as <laughs> retirements go. Yeah. Um, but also, it's interesting that in this matchup, there are two USA Eagles internationals playing because you've got Tim Maupin on the Trinity side, you've got Kevin Sheehan, the uh, St. Mary's flanker, who's also played in the States. First injury break of the game. Not quite sure who it is, but there's loads of bag men on the field, but they have. Uh, Water men. Yeah. Frank Murphy had stopped his watch anyway. So it's going to be a line out for St. Mary's just inside their own half. Uh, ten minutes gone and they lead by three points to nil. So Hugo Keane with his uh, second throw of the game. This time it is well taken in the, in the middle of the line. And Mary's got a good bit of momentum around that rolling ball. On to deck now though. David Fanagan not too happy with the with how that ball was brought down. No, it was debatable whether contact had been made earlier on. Uh, it was one of those now, these strange manoeuvres and lineouts where the, the non-receiving side stand off and don't make any contact with the opposition and then send a runner around the, to the back of the opposition ball to try and drag it down from there. And because there's been no uh, contact, there's actually no ball. No ball formed, yeah. uh, it's, it's a... A ruse is being used a lot by, by sides. Um, work well there for Mary's. Gain 30, 40 metres down the right hand side. Yeah, good kick from Sean Carnes that. So to date now Trinity have had no real attacking possession. The game has mainly been played to our left. Um, That's well taken there by Rafe Trill. But he was never going very far as he was grasped in the air by the, the Mary's Indeed. jumper. A, quite a good bust up the centre there by Trinity. That's uh, awkward enough and uh, Steve told Lennon takes that going backwards, looks to counter. And that's uh, almost free there, the uh, Ryan O'Loughlin on the right wing from, from Aries. Dara Fanning looking to use the size, that looks like a high tackle. The flag out, the touch charge on the far side, Adrian. Uh, referee hasn't reacted. No, he seemed to have a, he had a pretty good view of it. It was yeah. pretty close to it. He's happy to keep things going. Uh, any penalty would be against. Oh, oh, and that's, that's spilled by Connor Carnes there at full back, knocked on. And Frank Murphy now holds play, stops the watch, and he's going to go across to. Uh, speak to his touch out on the far side. Um, but as you said, he had a good view of it. And um, it would be interesting to see. But generally, the first uh, 12 minutes, Adrian St. Mary's are on top. Uh, they, they got position from kickoff and virtually haven't lost. The Trinity can't get out of their own half. And although when they, when they do have the ball, they're trying to move it. 
Um, the Marys. They haven't picked the right times, though, have they? They were the one good opportunity they had when they had a good numbers uh, yeah. uh, to their advantage, um, they didn't move it sharply enough. And in fairness, I think Frank, we were right. Frank Murphy did see it well. He's happy. Uh, and I would suggest he's overruled the touch judge there and said, no, no, I'm happy. It wasn't uh, overly high, therefore we'll play on. And so we'll have a, a, uh, a Trinity scrum now to... Oh, it's a Mary scrum, sorry. It's Frank standing on the far side. Um, and uh, Mary's good attacking position, 30 metres out. Uh, well stocked to the right. Um, Mary's have recruited well in the in the centre out of Munster with uh, Ivan Deneen and, and Marcus O'Driscoll, both sons of Munster who found a home here in Tamfield Road. That's uh, given against Trinity for collapsing there and again a, an opportunity for Sean Carnes to extend this lead from three to six points. Yeah, the Trinity captain Nick McCarthy just came up to query that with, with Frank Murphy but he was very clear in his decision and um, just thinking back to the match I saw him referee in, in, in Germany three or four weeks ago he was very clear early on with the scrums and um, in fact we had, a, we had a good game there where uh, the scrums weren't a problem because he got it sorted out early on and plenty of running and Germany actually beat Portugal by 50 points to 27 and saved themselves from relegation and the Portuguese were completely shell-shocked after the match that they had never been relegated out of the top division of, of the of European rugby. Um, I have to, I'm going to have to admit to not knowing a huge amount about that level of, of the game, and I, and I, but I certainly I would have thought, imagined Portugal would be the strong favourites in that yeah, match. -up. A lot of their good players play in the sevens on the mm. world circuit and that, that's part of their problem. Um, they are a, they've got a lot of good players, um, but that day there was a German pack who included three or four Springboks who'd become naturalised. That's a fine strike from Sean Carnes. He knew as soon as that left his boot that that was over the centre of the, of the horizontal. So that extends Mary's lead to six points to nil after 15 minutes. So Tommy Whittle to restart for Trinity. Goes deep. That's knocked on. See who that uh, was knocked down by. I think it might have been Brian McGovern, was it? It certainly was a, a, a forward who was back there. Whether it was a prop would be that far it back. Might have been a bit harsh on Brian McGovern. I think it's one of the. I think it might oh. have been uh, possible back row uh, or second Mark row. Mark Fallon, I think it was. Take it back, Brian. So now, for the first time, Trinity have got uh, field position in this game. Six points down, um, with an attacking scrum on the St Mary's 22. And let's just see if they can get good possession and um, get a, a worthwhile attack going. That's how it's gone. Lloyd feeds Whittle. Oh, and that's, that's good pressure in the, from the Mary's defence, but well held on to under that pressure. Yeah, with Mary's, are, it's going to be a penalty to Trinity. I think the advantage has been signalled by Frank Murphy for not rolling away in the tackle. But they have good, good hands on the right. And the advantage, oh. Max McFarland, McFarland through the dummy. That. Right now to O'Sullivan. And that's gone forward in the tackle. We're going to go back to the penalty, as earlier indicated by Frank Murphy. There's a hint of a scrap on the deck there. Pleasantry has been exchanged there between uh, David O'Connor. One of the Trinity guys. And that looks like uh, Toe Lennon being treated. Yeah. Indeed, it is. Uh, Steve Toe Lennon being treated just on the stair side. Looks like he might have got a knock to the head that yeah. time in, in trying to take Max McFarland, who threw the dummy and tried to go through. He had a man spare outside him, but backed himself and, and got nailed. It did well, Toe Lennon, in the circumstances, actually, just to, to jockey the situation. And, and, uh, and take McFarland. But he's paying a price for it now. A 
and he's having to leave the field. And interesting, I was just watching Frank Murphy there. Frank Murphy has made the decision uh, that he's had a knock to the head and therefore he cannot continue. Um, this is a very strict ruling now within uh, Irish rugby that if the, re the referee is the final say on any head injury, uh, there is no head injury assessment in domestic rugby. Uh, so Steve Tolan will not be returning to this game because he's gone off with a head injury. And that brings Terry Kennedy into the game, uh, son of the great Terry Kennedy. The rat. Starts, the rat. Yeah. So uh, maybe the rat will put the pint of smithics down on <laughs> and uh, pay more attention to the game. Uh, a great servant to this club, Terry Kennedy. <laughs> um, a voice from behind me says two chances. <laughs> two chances, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Interesting here now. Uh, Trinity, if they've got an Achilles heel this season, it has been their goal kicking. Uh, they've had a lot of chances because they've scored a lot of tries and things yeah. through the season. But I've seen them a couple of times in College Park and goal kicking has not been their strongest suit. Uh, they've relied on, on getting tries to, to win games. So well, We have a new kicker here um, because uh, Tommy Whittle is in in place of McDermott. Oh, and that's just drifted to the right and wide and dotted down so for a 22. Side, so it might be a different 19, kicker with the same problem, Gordon. Yeah, it, 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 that, even the strike didn't fill you with too no, much confidence. the sound of it wasn't, uh, yeah. it wasn't off the meat. So Carnes now drops that deep. It's taken by Tom Ryan. It is gobbled up by that Mary's pack. Lloyd now. He's whittled through the hands again. And that's a good bust up the centre. Whittle again. So that's tackled into touch. Uh, good defence by Mary's. They, they kept their shape. And Trinity not getting much joy. They're trying this burst through the middle and it's not, not getting any joy at the moment. I think Trinity will miss Seb from it. They had a, obviously Trinity had a, a very fine victory over UCD uh, 10 days ago in the Colours mm -hmm. match in College Park. Their first one for a number of years. And, uh, but it came at a cost. They lost a number of players through injury on the day and unfortunately the out half, um, Jack McDermott and the centre Seb from have both failed to recover in time. And the first chance now for Dara Fanning to show his way. Um, yeah, possible offside in the centre. Uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't material. Away, in fairness, Frank yeah. Murphy waved him back and it wasn't a, had no material effect. So Carnes he waved again play goes on. To and that's a tricky ball for, uh, for Conor Carnes to take, but it's, it's okay. He's knocked it backwards and he got the relieving kick away to around about the, uh, the halfway line. Well, or even the 10-yard line. Very, very conservative judgment there. <laughs> the judge judge would be too yeah. happy with that if I was young Kearns. Ah, well, he doesn't want to be overexerting himself this early in the game. <laughs> yeah. So Good. we find ourselves again in this patch where we've played most of this game, just inside the Trinity half. Uh, yet to have a kind of a, a game-changing piece of play that, uh, that enlivens the game. Yeah, the, the first 20 minutes are normally the mm. kind of the sorting out period. Oh, fantastic Aspel catch! Great hands there by Aspel. and he's made good yardage on the on the burst as well. That was a wonderful one-handed take. But have Trinity robbed they it? They have indeed. Yeah, they have. Now they look to counter now there again. Oh, he's going to kick it again. Might have that might have been an opportunity to run from deep. Fanning takes Fanning takes it now. Oh. Is it a tough man to take down? Yeah, a good tackle by Michael Courtney there. Um, obviously, a, f a much a much finer tackler than his father was in the wing for Monkstown many years ago. His father, Donald Courtney. Oh, Donald Courtney, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And carries the drop goal, but Ireland. it's uh, wide to the left. Uh, poor contact. Uh, would have had the length, all right, but um, it's not often you see players now attempting drop goals from that far out, Adrian. No, and I have to say, I was at the sports ground last sat, uh, Saturday evening, and I thought the uh, 
Leinster were guilty of not taking 103 points at the, at the death. They don't seem teams don't seem to don't seem to enter their thinking as often as it certainly used to. No, it would, would it just be the the confidence of the modern day player? We'll break them down. Oh, here comes Terry That's Kennedy. Great pace. There by Kennedy. You're fanning. Yeah. That's a, a couple of surnames that have reverberated around these parts over the yeah. years. I was juggled, but well taken on there by uh, by Kevin Sheehan. And this is good rugby Mar by Mary's. Fannigan going yeah, to do a snipe himself. Bit of momentum. Another Doesn't famous names from these, from these parts, Fannigan. Yeah, yes, grandson of the, of the, the infamous banana, mm -hmm. uh, who I'm sure, I haven't seen him here this evening, but I'm quite sure he's down below. He rarely would miss a match. I think the, the oldies were in the upstairs, the president's bar, they had six tables there, which couldn't fit in the, in the main dining room down below. So I think the, the old banana, I'm quite sure, was up there and is probably sitting inside watching the match mm -hmm. on this dank old evening. That was a good effort out of steel there by Trinity, but not quite coming off. Fanning is well taken in the tackle there. And that's not releasing after the tackle, so good pressure in defence on a couple of occasions in that movement by, by Trinity. Good contest. That's now three or four times Dara Fanning has got his hands on the ball and looking dangerous. Um, 29 years of age, has, has made the most of, of, of his career at this stage. I think I've signed him off a couple of times to go and play semi-pro rugby in Australia. Um, there used to be a, an out half in this club, an Australian guy, Sean McCarthy, who went back to, to Australia coaching his side, and he, for a couple of summers he, he brought Dara across to, to play over there. Um, he's almost been a full-time rugby player now for the past six, five, six years. Yeah. But he certainly had his opportunity. When, he, when his opportunity came, he certainly grasped it with both hands with Leinster. In on a six-week contract and turned it into three years. Yeah. Uh, Mary's defence very or well organised, Adrian. They're, they're not giving Trinity a sniff. Trinity are sniffing around the, the centre. Michael Courtney's trying to impose himself there with some forthright runs. Uh, but he's been closed down well by, by St Mary's. We look very well organised in, in defence. Of course, St Mary's uh, lost their, their head coach at the turn of the year, mm -hmm. Peter Smith, uh, who also coached in uh, coached the Black Rock College SCT. Uh, he has become the head of the academy in, in Leinster, with Gervin Dempsey moving up into the, the, the senior side. Uh, but Trinity have won that line at the far side. And they've, they've prospered. They won their own line out very cleanly just before that. So the line is working quite well for them. But that's not oh, going. And Fanning is away. Has he, got the, has he got the pace to make it the corner? He steps inside, but is well taken by Lloyd. And Trinity have managed to get numbers back there. And But that was a real uh, real opportunity there for Daryl Fanning. In fairness to Eric O'Sullivan, who, who looked <laughs> fearful <laughs> as Fanning loomed that. down him. He Fanning went you to size him. As well. <laughs> he, he, he got an arm to him, did enough to, to, to bring him to ground and, and give his team the chance to get back and defend. Uh, nightmare situation for a, a prop forward in defence yeah. to suddenly find a provincial winger bearing down on him. That's what you'll have if you hang around in the backfield like that. <laughs> but again, it's a penalty to, to Mary's and an opportunity to build a reasonably commanding lead of nine points after 27 minutes didn't quite see that uh, Gordon was for uh, playing the ball on the ground playing the ball back yeah. on the ground yeah a clear signal from Frank Murphy um, nobody from Trinity disputed it um, under a bit of pressure and uh, it's really Mary's are really putting up to Trinity now that the pressure under, they just build their scores, they'll be quite happy to just take their penalties and as we saw with um, Sean Cairns going to the drop goal a few minutes ago, they're just happy to, to try and build up points whilst in possession. And this is, uh, is this the advantage and experience that we're seeing? They've got uh, more more seasoned uh, ex-pro players and the like of Janine and Kieran Ruddock would be another one that would fall into that category. 
Yeah, David O'Connor is in the in the Leinster Academy, who's a, a back rower playing in the second row. Kevin Sheehan has been around the tracks. David Aspel is also part of the Leinster Academy. Uh, so a lot of Brian McGovern uh, has had a good season, was in the, the club international side. And they're not doing anything terribly flash, but they're playing the game in the right part of the pitch. Turns again, that's a good strike. Penalty for St. Mary's yeah. Okay, standing the lead to nine points to nil. It didn't sound like a good strike, in fact, and looked initially to be going outside because we were right behind it, but it curled beautifully and it was uh, just didn't, didn't quite sound right. Uh, what can Trinity produce now to get back in this game? 12 minutes to half time uh, with a bit of. Little drop steep again to. Uh, so number eight, Mark Fallon, this time he takes it well. Makes a bit of ground. But that's knocked down in the end. And that's uh, actually Trinity's best positions have come from just sticking it in reasonably deep and, and trying to force the error. Two kickoffs into that area have both resulted in them getting scrums. Uh, it's whether they can, they can break down this Mary's defence. Um, very experienced midfield pairing of Marcus O'Driscoll and Ivan Deneen. Uh, ex Shannon and, and Cork Constitution players. And they, do, uh, they do pride themselves on their midfield defence yeah. in uh, the strength of their game. I, in the notes that D. O'Brien gave us, that Marcus is a perfect 13, attacking outside with pace, organised the defence, and adamantine in his defensive partnership <laughs> with Ivan. Uh, I, I enjoyed that myself. Yes, we had to get the old dictionary out of that stage, and yeah. it's a D. O'Brien special to toss in a few words to uh, tease the brain. That was a good one there from Max McFarlane. But uh, Nick McCarthy not making any yardage as he came round there, and ultimately that's the penalty conceded as Mary's got well stuck into that one. Much to the delight of the home crowd. So Sean Carnes. Finds touch close to the halfway. I'm going to get on my soapbox about a dying art of the game. From that angle, the end over end kick does not gain you as much yardage as a spiral kick. Discuss. The problem with a spiral kick is that are they good enough to actually get a proper spiral? Because all you see with them is as, 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 as Trinity had earlier on, they sliced one going for exactly the same kind of kick. Um, to the tail. They're making good. Uh, yeah, again, Trinity stood off there looking uh, to see could they attack the back of it, but Marys were wise to it. The, the jumper kept at the front and they just turned around mm -hmm. unopposed. And they're, they're doing well out of David Aspel at the, the tail of the line out there. Good defence by Marys. They held off. Yeah, they didn't take the kicker in the good air. Good tussle there. Yeah. Marys trying to affect the choke yeah. tackle. Not quite managing on that occasion. Well, I, I would submit a choke tackle wouldn't have worked there because the, the kicker took the ball and then he was immediately tackled. Mm -hmm. So it would have been, and that still su surprises people, but it would have been a Trinity scrum if he had been held up there. Mm -hmm. Brian McGovern recycling that one. A uh, fine pass. He's got legs, he's got toes, Kennedy. Oh, well, it's knocked on, and a chance possibly for uh, McFarland to, to counter, but swallowed up by Fanning very well. Bit of confusion as to who that was intended for. I, I, so I think Adrian, you're, you're, you're getting the Trinity 14 mixed up. Oh, sorry. It's Tim Maupin. It's Tim Maupin, indeed, uh, you're right. Who is a right slightly wing. different shape, I would submit, to <laughs> Max McFarland. Tim Maupin is a big unit. Um, has scored a lot of tries for Trinity. He came across last year uh, to play in Dublin University. He was only intending to stay a year. But like happens to a lot of uh, foreign sportsmen who come to Ireland, <laughs> he came across an Irish Colleen and uh, ended up staying here. And Trinity were delighted to get him for a second season. Uh, he still plays with the States, international level, mm -hmm. but um, the, the level of rugby he gets here and, and the, the coaching and everything in Ireland uh, is standing him in very good stead. So Trinity's come just out on the, on the 22 to that side. Lloyd looks to pick it, but uh, Frank Murphy has given that decision. Yeah. It's a penalty against Brian McGovern for not pushing straight. Mm -hmm. uh, going across, it's uh, 
it's still an area I think that uh, the players, when they see what the referee has given, will wonder, well, how did he work that one out? Um, there's a lot of coaching goes into it, but uh, it really is a very grey area. Uh, unless you've, you've actually played in there, it, it can be very difficult. Um, and suggesting that referees don't know exactly what they're giving penalties for at all times. I never had a problem that way whatsoever, Adrian, as you well know. <laughs> but um, the case no one might have, all right. It's well taken on the table by Trinity. Good ball. Up to Whittle and that's trucked up the middle. Trinity coming There's back right. Numbers in defence here, though. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, it was a, a four-on-four coming, coming back that time. Uh -huh. uh, it's a good and choke by Marys. Marys look to choke, and they have done it that time. In fairness, Sean Cairns did his best to get a knee down the ground. He almost got there, and, and Marys pulled him back up. Um, because if he got one knee to ground, then Marys had to release him, because it would have been a... a uh, a rock situation um, but, and uh, that's a, a, a tactic that a lot of sides are using now is if they feel they're going to be choked they just try and get a knee to ground and then that, that, mm -hmm. that's, that ends them all so David Fannigan to feed the scrum um, clock showing 34 minutes here uh, it's uh, the clock here is controlled by the former president of St. Mary's, Michael Fannigan. I don't believe he, even Gower has the ability to stop the clock uh, when Frank Murphy puts his hand in the air. So there will be some injury time to be added on here at the end of the half. I think possibly only three short stoppages so far, Adrian, uh, in the game. Indeed, uh, we had the one for the, the head injury. Yeah. Um, but uh, interesting to see how Mary's are setting up here in the back. So they've got uh, Ivan Dineen very flat. On Kearns and uh, Dara Fanning looking threatening off the, the blind side. Loitering with intent. Uh, that's a good drive by Trinity. They've disrupted that. It's wheeled around and Frank Murphy's goes up. Arm goes up to indicate a penalty to Trinity. Well, that, that is an interesting decision. Uh, I think he may have given it for Mary's going down initially, but it looked for all the world that that could have been a, f a fast wheel by Trinity, which mm -hmm. of course is illegal. And that's, that's a penalty that one could say possibly has gone against the grain. Um, I'm quite sure if, if David McHugh, the uh, RFU performance manager of referees is watching, he'd probably be able to tell me I've got it wrong yet again. Um, but. So an overthrow oh, there, but Lloyd will pick that up and does well to get it away. Whittle moves it wide. Oh, but it's, oh juggled but regathered in the centre there by, uh, by Paddy Lavelle. Pretty good numbers coming around the corner here, but uh, pop back inside to, uh, to Connor Carnes. Lloyd now looks, goes to the grubber. That's a tricky enough one, but Dara Fanning has it okay. Back to Terry Kennedy. Taken by Whittle. And he perhaps looked open, but Carnes decides to have a, a cut himself. Ooh. Yeah, bottle up well in the tackle there, and if mm -hmm. Cairns has got back up, that was a hard hit on him. Uh, Trinity holding on, but they don't seem to really know how to unpick this Mary, Mary's defence at this stage. Uh, they've had great success all season in, in, on picking sides. Um, playing with good pace, good service from Lloyd at scrum half. Um, well, it's, uh, it's a very well organised and disciplined Mary's defence so far, isn't it? Perhaps uh, Mary, Trinity think they have to keep the pace of it up and keep the... Um, the unfortunately... The hands that, that defence will, uh, will start to show some holes. It's it's good effort there. by Conor Cairns there. He, Little half dummy got his hands through the tackle, but unfortunately it was Eric O'Sullivan, the, the loose head prop, who was the end of it, and um, he was unable to hold on to it. Uh, I'll say for uh, the uh, the Trinity props, both uh, O'Sullivan and, and uh, Andrew Keating are big men, probably bigger than the than, than the Marys guys. And uh, Frank Murphy, the referee, now has called both front rows over to him. He's obviously not happy with the way. Uh, things are going. There's been a few penalties in this area. He wants to try and clean it up. 
and he's just telling them, reminding them of their responsibility in this area. And um, let's hope that we're not going to have a, a series yeah. of collapse scrums. The Trinity props are certainly big, big units. Andrew Keating is six foot three. This is in the the Bull Hayes category almost. Yeah. David Fanning to feed. Again, Dara Fanning is uh, lurking with intent just inside uh, out half Sean Kearns. He's looking to wrap around as a support runner as Mary's go a little wider than they have done. And again, Kearns, good pressure, good line speed from Trinity. And uh, Eric O'Sullivan getting up to make a tackle. Yeah, they sent a, a bolt up there, Rafe Tyrrell, uh, to try and upset Mary's. Goes diagonal again. He's done that quite a few times. That's well taken this time. It's Max McFarland, who's known for his electric pace. Lloyd serving the ball left. Little chip oh, through. There's no one back for Mary. This could be interesting. Ivan Deneen, I think, going back on down on it. Trinity, real pressure here in the corner. The first time they really discommoded this Mary's defence. Tackled into touch and it'll be an attacking line out five metres mm. out. And just from the cheers down below us here, Adrian, there's a fair bit of support for Trinity. Um, the oh. terrace below us, you probably can't see on the television, is absolutely packed. Uh, they had a huge pre-match lunch where 260 people were booked in the waiting list for the, for the pre-match dinner or supper, as, as they call it, for these Friday Night Lights games. Um, the far terrace, uh, unfortunately, not too many over there. Although there's very few umbrellas up, which is a good sign. And hopefully it'll remain that way until the end of the game. It was well taken by Jack Burke there in the line. Trinity getting forced back by an aggressive uh, counter from, from Mary's there. But they have retained the ball. Hit hard there by uh, Rafe Tyrrell. He's an aggressive player. Whittle, that's a good little ball to uh, Max McFarlane, who's becoming more influential in the game now. Oh, but it's turned over, and David Fanigan clears, and there's a huge space back there. Conor Kearns going back, takes it, does very well to, well, not quite get away, uh, but Trinity have the numbers there. Game beginning to open up a bit, Gordon. It is, Adrian. We've played at a great pace. Mm -hmm. Both sides fully committed, and of course, it's, it's, a, it's always a university trait they want to play with. with, with, with with real pace, and if Trinity come, come wide yeah, here, good, good they have got large numbers outside, straighten and give, oh. give the ball, oh he doesn't have to, oh, superb break, or do that. Tom Ryan. <laughs> oh has he got it away, brilliant. He did, he but taken. it was a forward pass, oh, in fairness, given forward. Frank Murphy was there, and it's half time, uh, Frank Murphy blows, the best attack of the game by Trinity, uh, comes to grief on the, on the St Mary's 22, and at half time, uh, St Mary's College Tom lead. Ryan there was who uh, you didn't agree with his decision initially, Gordon, but he did well to bust through the tackle and, and find support inside. <laughs> so at, at half time, the home crowd are certainly the happier as Mary's lead by nine points to nil. Will it be enough as Trinity have started to show signs of, uh, of becoming a real f force in the game?
where St Mary's have one foot it might be fair to suggest Gordon in uh, Division 1A for next season don't be counting your chickens with 40 minutes to go, Adrian. They're not my chickens, Gordon. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the trophy's still in the boot of the car at this stage. If I desert you with five minutes to go, it'll only be if I feel that St. Mary's are completely out of sight at that stage. It's a, oh, that's a, a miscue drop-off, but, uh, but knocked on by, uh, by Patrick Finley. No, no, be, Hugo Keane. Hugo, the, oh, the Hugo Keane, indeed. Sorry, beg your pardon. Um, yeah, you're getting your blues and your whites mixed up. You realise they change sides at half time <laughs> and they play the opposite direction. Ah, you get the hang of this, yeah. So tr tr <laughs> Trinity now playing from right to left. Uh, Ugo Keane. Uh, Apologies, Hugo, who's uh, yeah. Irish. Uh, well, Hugo, Irish under 20s. Yeah, the former Black Rock. Uh, yeah. Former. He's one of. Uh, and Ugo Keane, all brought here by Peter Smith when he um, was the head coach. Um, they didn't, they, well, David O'Connor got a, a place in the academy, all right. Uh, thank you. And um, just like to take this opportunity, uh, hopefully, he's watching in. I think Gower is at Uruwela. Where does Mervyn live? Is it Uruwela? Uruwela Costa. Mervyn Johnson, former president of St Mary's, former president of Le Leinster Referees who I was informed at, uh, over dinner this evening will be 70 in a couple of weeks' time. Um, he'd be disgusted that I mentioned that there because the, the, the girls at the gym still think he's about 35, at least that's what he tells them uh, in Uruwela. But uh, Mervyn is back over with Deirdre in a couple of weeks' time, so hopefully we're looking forward to seeing them then. And uh, he'd be telling us stories of how there's, there never rains in Spain, it's always sunshine. And that is a stunning scrum from Trinity. Oh, Angus Lloyd, toy to the notion of tapping and going. He might have been lynched by his pack had he done so. Interesting decision. Will they go for post or will they go down the line? He's going down the line. I thought he might have just the first strike by Tommy Whittle, the replacement out half. They unfortunately injured Jack McDermott. Uh, and that's a good strike that into the corner. That is a good kick into the corner, about yeah. seven, eight metres, ten metres out, I guess. So Patrick Finlay will throw into this line out. Um, Part of a good Trinity front row who really did a job in their opposite numbers in that scrum. They certainly did, and the rain has actually come down a little heavier than it had been in the, the first half, where it eased off quite considerably. Oh, well that's knocked down at the front, and that's um, fortunate for Tr Trinity they will get another shot at that because uh, Hugo Keane has been tackled into touch there. Good seal the front by Kieran Ruddock, who was very experienced. Ex Leinster Academy, son of Mike, former uh, Welsh Grand Slam winning coach, and brother Rhys, uh, who'll be playing for Leinster tomorrow against Munster in the big match in the Aviva Stadium. And the only second row here is not a product of Black Rock College. In there, he so, good position here for Trinity. Oh, but it's been knocked down and scrum. And an opportunity to counter here as Ivan Deneen goes to. Marcus O'Driscoll, he slices his kick ahead. Could though. be an interesting cross oh, kick. And that's oh, that's a big clash and a nasty looking clash. Two players, Dara Fanning and. Uh, is it Connor Kerr? I think it it's is. Mopin, is it? It's Mopin, yeah. Two, the two big men in the wings. Yeah. Oh, and that's oh. another big hit in the middle there this time. Yeah, by, it, was uh, a real, it was a Hail Mary pass to Max McFarland there. But Trinity still in possession. Good hands. Trinity. Good hands. Now they have a three to one going right here. A bit of pace. Give it. Some fairly desperate cover by St Mary's, but sufficient unto the needs on that occasion. But failing to release and the tackle, and Lloyd is tapped by Lloyd this time. He thought about it previously, but this time he does it. Uh, that's scrappy. He's been knocked down. Yeah. Lloyd has been threatening to take these quick taps, and, and finally had a tap and go there. But unfortunately, probably a wet ball, Adrian. As you said yourself, there the, the the hoods have come up and the umbrellas are up now. This second half. Um, I think Donald Courtney shaking his head in frustration down below at what happened there. It doesn't look like a happy punter. That's the way fathers get. <laughs> it's 
not easy. I had the uncomfortable experience of watching my own son for the first time in a big game, and I, I now understand what my mother went through. <laughs> when did you last play a big game? Did your mother remember? <laughs> About 20 years after your last big one. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yeah, a uh, couple of just injury breaks here. In fairness to Dara Fanning and Tim Mopin, they, they both recovered Ooh, well. That could have been very nasty. Yeah, it looked almost like head on head at one stage, but they have uh, come through it. So Mary's scrum on their own 22. Um, the second half starting a bit like the first half, Adrian, where we keep looking to our left hand side. Indeed, Most of the players been story. down at the, the Temple Road end of the ground. The other realisation I've had later in life about rugby, Gordon, is that the real brave guys are the backs. All those years have been told that the forwards were the tough guys and the backs were the... Uh, the ladies. Were the ladies. But it's the high-impact collisions that involve... Uh, the backs involve the high-impact collisions. And in fact, my son, who played number eight until he changed just this year to wing, said forwards much easier. All that kind of just, you know, closely in tackling. That's easy stuff. It's the high impact stuff. That collision there between um, Open and Fanning uh, was the gutsiest collision of the evening. That's both it. of them committed going for the ball oh. at high pace. Uh, and both with their eyes only on the ball, but we didn't realise where, where their opposite number was. Uh, and it's it's something when you when you do see these bombs go up. Well, that was a that was a, a miscued uh, cross kick as it turned out. Uh, but when you see bombs go up now and uh, two players approaching at the same time. Uh, you, th you think back to the Jared Payne situation in, in Ravenhill uh, when he did n absolutely nothing wrong and ended up getting red carded. Indeed, yeah. uh, and it's, it's an area now that I think coaches get so yeah. frightened about. Very costly, uh, that was a very costly decision for Ulster. So Mary's now having to defend uh, for most of the, uh, the first seven minutes of this half. Fanning and Kieran Kick, that does find touch. Did you take it back inside? Trinity players are protesting that that was taken back from outside the 22. Did you have a view on that, Gordon? Uh, sorry, I wasn't watching. I was actually looking at my phone there. I see a few messages. One of them is from the aforementioned Mervyn Johnson, who says, of course watching in sunny Spain, Merv. It never rains in Spain. So Finley throws, good line up by Trinity. Getting more and more into this game. High tackle, indeed it was. And again, no, it goes quickly. But referee Frank Murphy's gonna call them back. I think he's worried about a Trinity. Two Mary's yeah. players are. It's Ivan Deneen is one, and I think Sean Kern's the other. Two key men for Mary's. Uh, they both went to tackle the Trinity player and I would suggest we haven't got the benefit of a screen, but it was probably head on head. Um, it did look kind of upright, didn't it? And Ivan Deneen is the, the one that's taking longer to get so up. Just looking if we see a play back there where we can't. Uh, and this looks pretty sad for Ivan Deneen. I su would suggest he has. Yeah, that's um, taken a bad knock to his head, and this will be the end of his game. Uh, Sean Cairns was the other one, was he? Uh, he Adrian? was indeed, yeah. Uh, but he's up and looking healthy again. Yeah. Further evidence for my thesis that the backs are the tough guys in this game. Thankfully, Ivan Deneen has retaken his, his feet. I have to say, he does look pretty ginger as he retakes his position there. But Frank Murphy must be happy enough. And indeed, uh, Sean Kearns it is now getting uh, some further treatment. A 
I think that's Terry Kennedy. He's taking advantage of the presence of the physio to get uh, some running repairs. Well, in fairness, Adrian, the St. Mary players have uh, Sean Carnes, beg your pardon. Have done very well to survive that. They both looked mm. in a bad way initially on the ground. Uh, and of course, Trinity had the penalty from the, the, the high tackle. So Tommy Whittle is going to line us up from um, oh, just three or four yards uh, outside his 10 meter line, or inside his 10 meter line. Uh, obviously, has the confidence if he's going from here, but his, his, his only other kick of the game. Mm. Didn't look like it was. Um, it had the legs. So this will be a very interesting kick now. Struck us back off the post. And that was a fine strike, Adrian. It was a decent strike, yeah, but just a little, uh, yeah. a little draw on it. I think uh, just. And it was a dangerous ball, well tied it up by Mary's as it came back off that post. Cars now, but that's uh, that's world back, work back inside. Yeah, and Trinity this time looking to affect the choke. Now I've been told to release. That was a good cutback move, Adrian, but by Ivan Deneen. As he recovered from the, the earlier clash. Uh, David Gannigan goes to the air, straight yeah, in, straight and, in and it'll uh, be a line-out back. Um, it was uh, clever enough by, uh, by Max McFarland on that occasion, making sure that he had the foot planted in touch. It was, and, and Trinity came racing up to try and take a quick throw in. Michael Courtney was the inside, and David O'Connor gave him a, a timely shove off the ball. Uh, they would be good mates, would have played their, their way up and then gave him a pat in the back afterwards. Uh, but Pat McFinley with the, the line out, good take down to Lloyd. Cross to Willie. Oh, well, that's cut knocked back. down on the cutback. And uh, yeah, we will come back. There's no advantage to Mary's. Little errors costing Trinity. Good positions. Yeah, I'm just watching Hugh Maguire and Tony Smith down below here. They're getting frustrated with these errors. They've probably made more errors today than they've made in most of the matches put together this season. And they've had a fantastic run of games. Uh, I think the only defeat they've had in maybe the last 12, 14 games was against Buccaneers, and I happened to be in College Park that day. Uh, and that was a game whereas, where Buccaneers played very well, yes, but Trinity threw it away. Um, Early December, or early January. Another huge scrum from Trinity. Turnover ball. Yep, another one against the head. Fairness Ryan gets it back. Yeah. Uh, Whittle now dinks that one down. It's going to be went, a good yeah. position again. Went through Paddy Lavelle's hands and luckily went straight to Tommy Whittle. Uh, so Trinity made another mistake, but they got away with that one. And they have a good attacking position now, 20 metres out from the St Mary's line. But really, you'd think, Adrian, with uh, 53 minutes gone, that Trinity need to get at some points to the board. They've hit the post for that most recent shot at goal, but they need something here to put the pressure on St Mary's. But they finally established clear superiority in the scrum, which is uh, going to be cause a great encouragement to them, and that's directly translating into into position. Good work there by Kieran Ruddock. Mm. Uh, Force the Trinity man in uh, out of the touch line, and that gives Marys now a line out 10 metres from their own line. But they're, they're set pieces up because that's, that was actually one against the throw, although Marys did manage to, to nullify the threat by driving into touch. And again, Trinity are getting up and making life awkward for, for Marys in that line out. Yeah, from memory, but last time I was up here, Marys, their, their line out had been a problem for a lot of the season. Uh, pressure on Flanagan there. A 
That's a very good relieving kick, actually, that by David Fanagan, making very good ground from a very tight angle. Yeah, of course, David Fanagan, ex Trinity player himself, would have played both fullback and scrum half in Trinity, depending on what the needs of the side were. Just like his uncle Jody did in uh, UCD. He played a bit of a scrum half more again than an out half and also at fullback. That was, that was when he was free from his golfing commitments. It was. Is David a good golfer as well? Uh, all these Fannigans are supposedly great at everything. Multi talented, yeah. yeah. Good, good pick and driving yeah, by is, Trinity up it's the middle. Quality work up front by, by Trinity again to get the, the drive on. And the, the crowd have there's a, an air of anxiety in the home crowd, I think. There are. They've gone a little bit quiet. Uh, Oh, that's good hands by Whittle because it wasn't the best pass from Lloyd. Go barreling run down that right hand side. You just get the impression Marys are are, are holding on here. That that, 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 that that tackles are just about holding Trinity up. Yeah. Whittle again, a couple of ropey passes. Patrick Finley uh, cutting back inside. He did well to cut back there. There was no future out wide. Trinity go down the short side again. Work it outside. Lloyd is a busy scrum half. Uh, go on, excellent tackle. Very good but, tackle. Uh, one sense is that a Trinity score. And a, and a great ball back inside to Ryan. Lloyd gets there quickly again. again. Fires out to Whittle. To Cairns. Cairns and goes. Taken though by, uh, by number eight, Mark Fallon. Eric O'Sullivan thought about the pop inside, held on to it and paid a price for mm -hmm. it as he gets tackled backwards. It was almost kind of a, a fear factor. Oh, what have I got to do with this one? Hey, Trinity have regrouped. This is a, a good yeah, little good spell here from them. Good tackle there. They've, they've held on. He's Lloyd back, back inside to Ryan again. Uh, pops it out. Whittle looks. A little indecisive in what he was looking to do there. Yeah. But. Trinity gaining good continuity and now really starting to threaten that. Uh, oh, it's knocked on uh, just as I say that. Yeah. Mary's out, but it, it's. I'm just looking at the at the body language of the Mary's team, and Dara Fanning is now going around, really trying to lift the team. They they seem to have gone flat. Uh, Trinity have got all the momentum with them. It's a Mary's scrum, but the last couple of scrums, Adrian Trinity have driven Mary's off the ball. Uh, physio dubious, doctor being honour for them. Uh, yeah. the scrum here, so. Uh, Trinity are bringing on it. Jack Fitzpatrick, uh, number twenty, and he is going to replace who? Nobody has come off just yet. Is it Tommy Whittle? That's Tommy Whittle, yeah. Yeah. Um, who played in the Leinster on a twenty side this year, but hasn't had the experience of these matches. And as you said, there he looked a little bit indecisive when he got that ball. He looks fairly disconsolate coming off. So Jack Fitzpatrick has gone to full back. Mm. Sean Cairns, I would submit, is probably going into out half. Uh, but of course, with rolling substitutions, Adrian, yeah. it's uh, possible that Tommy Whittle may come back. Um, he looks a little bit um, disappointed coming off there. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's been mixed. He's shown some very nice touches and very nice yeah. passing uh, ability. Uh, he'll be disappointed with a couple of kicks though missed, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah. Again, Trinity get the no, John. Is that going to be a penalty? No. He's going to reset. And he's possibly getting away with that one, Gordon. Ah, difficult to tell. We're a long way away here. The referee was on top of it. Uh, I think. At this stage, you'd be making some allowance for the fact that it's, it's very slippery under underfoot, um, and uh, he would want to be very certain that a team has deliberately dropped it down. But certainly, the, the Trinity front row, the uh, big front row of Eric O'Sullivan, Patrick Finlay, and Andrew Keating, are giving them the Mary's front row a real roasting here. Uh, it's a total turnaround from the, the first half an hour of the game when Mary's looked to be on top. I'll be interested to see in this scrum here. It's, uh, and again, it's not often uh, Brian McGovern goes backwards. Brian McGovern's on the Irish clubs. 
team. There is uh, on the other yeah, side. But the uh, Thomas Riley is a, is a relatively inexperienced and, and young as props go. But Brian McGovern, if, if I'm not mistaken, played loose head on the the club's team. He can play both sides of the scrum, and tonight he's playing uh, tight head. One of the problems that St Mary's has is that their club captain for the year, Robert Chops Sweeney, uh, has had to. Uh, I, I read, I think he's notes that he's actually retired from the game because of a, a back injury. Yeah. Been around a long time, but both um, he and his brother Chips, uh, the company known as Chops and Chips for the amount they eat, uh, sons of JB and, and Joyce Sweeney, have been fantastic servants to St Mary's. Um, long pass out, well cleaned up by Michael Courtney. Um, ensure that Trinity keep possession. Drive, oh, no, drive forward now by Andrew Keating. Um, Cairns, Cairns if it is behind down. Ryan, it was a stop. Uh, and that's not on in yeah. the tackle there. <coughs> it's just again these errors undermining a lot of the good work the Trinity are doing. Yeah. That was unfortunate because because the pass was behind Thomas Ryan, who had to actually stop to, to take the ball. And it's one of the most frustrating things about the modern game, Adrian, is players don't put the ball in front of the player as they should. They put them high, they put them low, they put them behind them. And the simple skills of actually passing a ball and putting it into what we were always taught was the bread basket in front yeah. of the player. Uh, uh, well, certainly it was amazing how when Joe Schmidt arrived to Leinster, he basically said we're going to become the best passing team in Europe. And everybody kind of scoffed because professional rugby players surely can pass the ball. Uh, but the execution of it uh, for Leicester went through the roof and their fortunes rose with that. Yeah. But he had to take them back to basics, how to give and take a pass. Uh, here was a team of, of, of international players who weren't doing the basics right. Um, but Joe, Joe was famous for going to the last detail in his coaching and he, he, he got it right. Uh, A chance so again, Trinity, and that's it. Not driving straight, driving at the angle. It was certainly at an angle. But was that deliberate, in your view? Uh, I'm just watching the body language of the Trinity coach, Hugh McGuire, down below, who certainly is very, very frustrated at that penalty. Um, I've always felt it's a bit harsh when just if one prop establishes a superiority that his, yeah. his counter prop doesn't, that scrum will go and it will drive forward at an angle. And so it's, it's not necessarily deliberate. Yeah. And you could, have, you could have one side where Eric O'Sullivan has got the upper hand and Brian McGovern. Uh, and Again, yeah. Trinity standing off that uh, line out to the marriage are, to the mall. Marys are wise to it. They. The, the, the catcher is standing and looking. Oh, that's very well taken by uh, Thomas Ryan. Yeah. And he battles for another couple of yards. Yeah, he's in a fine game. He has. certainly has. And the uh, open side, Brian Detroit. Uh, Connor Cairns has kicked it. Well, that work. Uh, a ball is down the middle of the park. That's enterprising for Marys. Yeah. Hugo Keane taking that one around. And Marys have gone back to bases a bit here. Pick and drive, pick and drive, and then a, a box kick from David Fanigan. Yeah. And ending up just as a pile up, and Frank Murphy giving the scrum to Marys. So it's into the final quarter, Adrian. No score in this half yet. St. Mary's still lead by nine points to nil, but. Um, Trinity very definitely uh, on top in this half. Um, for their sake, they need to get a score here very quickly um, to really put the pressure on Marys, who, who, are, who are looking at their side, who are quite rattled at this stage. They certainly are, and every time there's a scrum, Trinity are seeing this as an opportunity. Again, they get the drive on, again it comes around, again the referee penalizes Trinity. 
and you can hear the frustration, the howls of frustration from the Trinity supporters here. Yeah, and I, I have to say that Brian McGovern dropped his bind there and tight head for St Mary's. Um, the Trinity were pushing straight, McGovern dropped his bind, he was the one who went backwards and I'd have to question that decision. So Sean Kearns just to relieve some of this uh, fairly incessant pressure in the second half for Mary's. Finds touch just on, but just inside the halfway. And <laughs> there's parity of conservatism by the touch judges in terms of... No, that wasn't a, it wasn't a great kick. Um, uh, I'd, I'd have given him the five metres up the halfway line. Uh, I thought it actually could have been five metres the other way, so we'd <laughs> beg to differ. Taken again by Aspel at the tail. He's been their best source of line but that's turned over. Sort of surreptitiously. I didn't see quite how that happened. Andrew Keating taking that on. Well stepped back by, by Brian de Toit, uh, who has done very well. Apparently, I heard beforehand from the, the Trinity chairman, John Boyd, that was a a oh, forward pass it which certainly looked forward to us yeah. and we were standing right across from it uh, as was Frank Murphy the referee I think he was blinded by uh, somebody in the line of that he but uh, uh, talking to John Boyd the uh, chairman of Trinity uh, beforehand he was saying that uh, Brian Detoit the, the Trinity flanker uh, hurt his ribs uh, quite quite badly in the in the colours match and um, he wasn't sure how long he was going to last but he's lasted so far uh, 65 minutes, um, part of a very good Trinity pack. Well, uh, Kearns takes chance for Trinity to, to counter here. Jack Fitzpatrick steps inside one, but taken by the second. And Trinity just keep on coming. Kearns again, he's clean through. Um, That's a super rake. Can he get through the last man? Kennedy can't quite take him. Nice. Quick ball required here. That's well gobbled up, just around the fringe. Uh, is it offside? Is it? Uh, not done. And he probably was gone the distance if he could have held on to that. As it is, a cracking position here for Trinity, and they've got big numbers out, but the ball has been slowed down. Kearns goes wide. Ash or um, oh. Ryan, I think it is. Lloyd going sniffing, goes out to the right. Not a great pass, but it's well taken, and that's going to be over in the, the corner. corner. And you have to say that that's well, nothing less than well deserved but for Trinity. Well, I was about to say, Adrian, about 45 seconds ago, that this had a whiff of, of if Trinity didn't score, Marys were likely to intercept and go the length of the pitch. It almost happened, but Trinity now have got a fully, fully deserved score in the far corner. Um, did you manage to see who? I think it was Mopan, the uh, Tim Mopan, the right wing, who took the pass from possibly was it Eric O'Sullivan, the prop, was out there. He's been uh, in the wide open a few times, Eric O'Sullivan. It ended up we, being, yeah, being, we think being, being smart passing. Tim Mopan, Mo yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. The try, the try was over in the far corner. We think it was Tim Mopin. Uh, the loudspeak, the announcer is going to announce that there. So, if we, if we, if we've got it wrong, we'll probably be a reaction from <laughs> the supporters. So Conor Carnes to try and add the extras here. Difficult kick from just a few meters in from the right hand touch line. It's not a great strike. It's no, it's well to the right. Uh, However, Conor Carr's going to reflect on uh, having made the break and initiated that whole passage of play. And he is an elusive runner. He'd love to step off the left there. Good pace. And, uh, twice he went, he went straight through two tackles. Um, very elusive. So now, uh, what, what answer have Mary's got? They've just... That try has come after what we'll have to say is almost half an hour of incessant pressure from Trinity. Um, so now they need to clear their lines now and get back down the far end again. 
Uh, but being a university side, they're probably going to try and do dangerous things in their own 22. <laughs> and, that, and that's um, why you have to love them. Yeah, and Marys are going to and go for the choke tackle, and have probably they are going to affect it. Yes, yeah. indeed. They fall not yeah. to deck. So, oh. and what are the bets now? We have a scrum to Marys. Trinity were going to drive forward. Will they get penalised? The last two scrums have been penalised for uh, driving up. It's actually driving up the loose sand side where. Uh, from our vantage point up here, Eric O'Sullivan seems to have a total upper hand in Brian McGovern, um, who would be a more natural loose head than he would be a tight head. Um. So 10 minutes to go, match. In fact, promotion is now... Uh, and I, I, I think boys. Trinity have actually swapped their props over. And Keating has gone to loose head. Again, Trinity with the shove on, but... But uh, Mary's been picked at the back by Mark Fallon. By Mark Fallon indeed. And, that's and Trinity Sturgeon have stolen it. Trinity have stolen it again. Good work by the back row there. But knocked on. I have to say, I didn't see the knock on, but obviously Frank Murphy, an awful lot closer, picked it up. And as a former scrum half himself, he knows how these things can happen at, at the. Uh, the back of a, a rocker and ball only says for a body to move slightly. McCarthy uh, there complaining of a, I think an elbow injury or something happened to his arm. And Trinity is sending on Keno Dwyer, number 18. He's probably uh, going to play in the back five. But uh, Captain McCarthy looks like he's going to continue. He and Mark Fallon go back a bit. They would have played against each other in the 2011 Senior Cup final. Clown goes against uh, Michaels. All right. Or, uh, so, on for Mary's has come Ian Cullinan, um, another former Munster player. Substitution on the same He's taken over from Mark Fallon. Sorry, Mark Fallon. Had that one wrong. Clown was against Mary's in the semi final in 2011. So Terry Kennedy standing on the open side. Will they feed him, use his pace? Oh, that's nearly mm. away by Fannigan. Yeah. Lloyd just getting a, a fingertip on the jersey and slowing him down sufficiently to put him off his, uh, his balance. Fannigan's known for his pace and his sniping breaks. Mary's picking and driving, picking and driving, probably hoping to, to win a penalty out of the Trinity defence here, but Trinity holding, holding firm. Fanning it out to Cairns. Cut back inside. A hard run there the by... Yeah. Uh. Oh, that's a good bit of grand gain there, close to the line. Kieran Ruddock. Ruddock. Trinity player down, so momentarily... I think that's Nick McCarthy. He looks in a bad way there with that uh, arm injury. <laughs> so Mary's getting ever closer, and this could be the decisive moment in the match. Well, that's good defence by Trinity on the short side. Well, it was. McCarthy, He's despite his injury, it's phenomenal stuff. M Trinity have turned it over. Uh, spin it wide, spin it wide, you men out west. Wide, they are. Tremendous pass. No. Didn't open up quite as they had hoped as they spun that one across. Lloyd taking the slightly more sensible option and kicking deep and right. clearing the lines. And That's what else. Wonderful defensive play by Trinity. McCarthy is... Uh, that was phenomenal by Nick McCarthy. He's looking inside. His left arm looks almost useless at this stage. And I think Trinity are going to make a call to bring him off... Um, I said he could come off. Oh, it's not McCarthy. It's uh, number yeah. five, uh, Rafe Tyrrell. Um. So the clock showing 34 minutes. Adrian, all to play for here. Trinity have, have escaped that serious bit of pressure. Uh, Tyrrell is coming off. It looks like, and Warren Larkin 
Number 16 is coming on, who is the sub hooker. Certainly not a, a like for like replacement there. No. Uh, possibly he's put. Uh, Nick McCarthy is having to come off of that, uh, that arm injury, you can see, hanging down by his side. I have to say, that was one of the most courageous pieces of play I've seen in a long time from Nick McCarthy there as he effected a critical play with uh, his arm just hanging by his side. A chip off the old block there, and his Noel. father Noel, yeah. uh, who did ma many a Herkligan task for Mary's over the years. Um. And on this occasion, it's Mary's that get the line out, the ball rolling forward off that line out. And this is just the kind of experience that, uh, that Mary's have in their team. They're playing this exactly right as the clock winds for 36 minutes. See Dara Fanny coming in on that, leaving the entire side of the, the pitch empty if a turnover was to be affected. But uh, I was watching Frank Murphy, the referee there, to see uh, was he going to find any fault with Trinity's defence in fairness? No, and uh, Mary's drive forward again. Back Aaron inside Ruddick to Ruddick. That one in. Dirty Fanning and assesses his options. He'd have to go left because there's nobody on the right. Uh, Mary's back inside the, the Trinity 22. Trinity defence well set here though. And, oh, it's a good clear out by Mary's there. Now Mary's will reset. Brian McGovern will just look to and they're just again very canny just winding this clock down as we have gone past the 36th minute in this second half. Mary's just taking all the pace out of this now. And the danger always was that the Trinity would get somebody in to affect the turnover. They are a long way from home. Angus Lloyd taps and goes. Carnes kicks deep. Oh, oh straight no. out. Straight out, and that's a hammer oh. blow. It was exactly the right option because it was vast acreage back there and he had the pace actually even he kept it in play well Dara, Dara Fanning own. was back there but uh, even he is looking tired um, if Trinity could have could have kept that ball in play it could have been interesting so 30 minutes 37 minutes showing the, the clock uh, the instruction I, we think Michael Fanning is trying to make this clock go a bit faster than it's supposed to uh, the Mary's supporters up here in the box with us chewing the fingernails this stage as Trinity put them under fantastic pressure. And the, uh, the stricken Trinity captain Nick McCarthy just instructing his team from the sideline, play it up there, get out of your own half. Well, Doc, that's a good burning charge. Cairns now, back into Ivan Janine. Takes two to take him down, still makes a bit of yardage. Turned over again though by Trinity. Can they get that away? They can indeed, under pressure though. And I think it's an offside against uh, Scrum Avenue coming around the side. And the instructions from the sideline uh, McCarthy, the captain, Hugh McGuire is signaling, get the ball down into the Mary's half. And Conor Cairns, fine a, kick. An excellent kick, indeed. Up to almost the 10 metre line. We'll see where the touch, well, he's only gone five metres. Um, yeah. So just two minutes of normal time remaining. Uh, Mary's uh, Emmett Ferron, the former Bechtel player, has come on. And the chance of, of Mary's, Mary's ringing around the ground, led by Niall Rin, their former president, whose stentorian voice can, rings out around this ground. Stentorian, adamantine, you've lost uh, it on yourself. Uh, it's, all, it's all to do with Tio O'Brien. <laughs> A steal by St. Mary's. 
No, they'll do it. They'll go, they'll go back and to the pick and charge. Fresh legs. Adds a bit of energy to that. And they got a bit blinkered there. They had a five to one if they just popped yeah, the ball out they're, wide. They're really just interested in, in keeping this in tight. <laughs> winding down this clock yeah. as we're into the 40th minute now. We don't know how much injury time is going to be. That's a knock on. He's giving it as deliberate. Ooh. Oh, that's harsh. Have to say. It was certainly a knock on. Whether it was deliberate. Uh, Why would he? There's no, there's no. no upside in knocking that forward from No. Trinity player getting treatment for cramp here at the moment. Uh, Mimrate Tom Ryan, who's had a magnificent game for Trinity. Um. Fans, fans touch 10 metres outside the Trinity 22. And we're now in referee's time, Adrian. As the clock is showing 40. Mary's have a huddle inside this line out. Um, I think maybe the difference this game was a slow start by Trinity, which gave Mary's a field position. I wonder, was it a bit of a hangover from the, the, the Colours match against UCD nine days ago that just took a lot out of them? Mary's have had a rest for uh, three weeks. Um, good, good throw to the back. Again, Mary's getting a good drive on off it. Down to deck. In fairness, many a referee would have been tempted to penalise after bringing it down, but I think that was just a, a natural, natural it's collapse. Momentum, I think, indeed. Yep. Um, Mary's again just trying to keep this very tight. Farron takes it on. Popped out. Oh, really not gone, but regathered well. Flanagan pops. Kieran Ruddock, he's carried tirelessly in the second half. And the legs it's are pumping it. He's, oh, he's made 15 metres there. Tremendous drive. Oh, I think Flanagan was looking to see was that, it. That was on, actually. They could yeah. have given. Darren Fanning run for the corner there, they chose it, but... I thought they were looking for a drop goal, actually, just the way he was going to pop well, the I ball back. I'm wondering why they don't just uh, try and seal this by chipping it over, but... Like I was saying earlier, it seems to have gone out of vogue. And Trinity can't get their hands on the ball here. I'm thinking that maybe there's only maybe maximum of two minutes left, maybe even only David, one. David O'Connor taking on that time. Planning in well off his wing, but using his size. 42 minutes on the clock now. Can't be all that much time left. Fanny again, he's an auxiliary forward at this stage. Uh, there ain't too much width to the uh, Mary's back down at this oh. stage. There's a four-man peloton directly behind the, <laughs> the rock. Comically now. <laughs> Mary's man down with a, a, a knee or a calf injury. Um, this period of play has gone now for yeah, two, two and a half minutes. There as well. And it's penalty. Penalty to Trinity. Can, Trinity needs to tap and go. Tap uh, to keep this going. And they have. That's, uh, but he could be isolated open, here. I think tapping that one. Is there one shock in the tank? It's another penalty. And a tap. Another he's you're off goes, again. He's away. Oh, he's pulled back. <laughs> to the horror of the Trinity supporters. Yes. Angus Lloyd, who has been so, so sharp all night. Uh... Mary sending, that back because Mary sending the Fallon back because it was an injury. Uh, that's a very good question, Adrian. Their bodies coming on and off. Uh, there is a tr there is a Mary's man. There's two of them down now. One but there seems to be one who's got a bit more serious. I think that's Dave, that's David Aspel. The six. Yeah. He's. Uh, he's any treat in this other one? Is that David Fanagan, perhaps? And that Brian McGovern who's hobbling towards the sideline. Yeah, that's the first. There's actually three of them at this stage. David Asper's yeah. going to be carried off. And, uh, 
There's three Mary's men coming off looking very, very sore. Uh, leg, rib and a leg. So obviously there must be time for further play because Trinity are looking for a touch but it's been sliced. It's uh, on the 10 meter line. Frank Murphy is looking at his oh, watch. Calls of blow it up. Yeah. And if Adrian, I, from the terrace. if I leave you rapidly here, it's been, it's been a pleasure to work yes. with you. <laughs> I, as soon as the final whistle goes and if Mary's won, I've got to dash to the car and get the cup and the medals out. And for old Michael Coughlin, uh, the Trinity representative is on the RFU committee will have the task of presenting the trophy to St. Mary's, um, having, beat, have, having them oh, beaten his the beloved Trinity. Takes, moves wide. But there's life oh, yet. Well lined up. Oh. A super offload by Michael Courtney there. That uh, was very good. Uh, Commitment yeah. to the tackle there from Marcus Adriscoli. Just did enough. But now Courtney's down injured. His body's dropping body's everywhere. everywhere, yeah. Still Trinity yeah. come at it. And we have to remember this has been a, a very heavy surface after the rain for most of the day. Um, but Trinity a long way from... And they again now looking for the choke tackle. Now been told to release. Yeah, the ball is there. Go with the short side this time. Yeah, but it's again. three Kearns against three. He's been very good actually since he's moved into the out half slot, I think. Yes, he's uh, produced a spark for them. And Michael Courtney has got double cramp, both legs. Uh, which just shows you how heavy the conditions are. Again, Cairns. Trying to go left again. But they were, Cairns was running across the pitch there and was, was pushing his men across. Uh, and I'm wagering a guess here, Adrian, that oh, pops into the, the, the next for stoppage Patrick. is it. I think this probably, I think you're right, Gordon, say this, it's, it's do or die time now. Trinity still have it. Again, the Marys just line up with the tackles. There's um, numbers here if they can shift it. Oh, oh. Not done. I've got to put it in touch. Into the touch it goes, referee blows his whistle. And St. Mary's College are promoted to Division 1A of the Ulster Bank League. Gordon Black is scurrying off to get the trophy. In time for the presentation, but uh, a very happy home crowd here. Final score here in Tepper Road is St. Mary's Night, Dublin University 5. You probably heard that on the PA. Final score here is St. Mary's College 9. Thank you Trinity very College much for five up points. Here the so tonight. Trinity will uh, fight on in the well, in the playoffs where if they finish second, they will play the, th the team that finishes third, likely to be uh, either Bucks or Wesley. Uh, I have to seek promotion through that route. On the positive side, they've given a very fine performance here this evening, and they can look forward to those playoffs. Uh, with good heart. That's it for this evening. We're going to wrap it up. Our congratulations go to St. Mary's and thank, thank them for their hospitality this evening. And we leave you uh, for this evening. Thank you.